some sp- particular things that we wanted to kind of improve. Uh, so mitochondria, if we look at mitochondrial health, so what kind of, what would you recommend like your top three or however many you think is appropriate if you want to improve your mitochondrial health? So, okay. So I've been obsessing, <laughs> absolutely mm-hmm. obsessing, as I mentioned about sort two and three. Mm-hmm. And the reason I've been obsessing about this so it's it's um the sirtuins are uh, they remove acetyl groups used to be just from histones but it turns out it's from all proteins and by removing acetyl groups it turns proteins on and we know of a minimum of 84 different mitochondrial proteins that get activated with sirtuin 3 and it has complex interactions with P- PGC1 alpha and the AMP kinase system. But in general, if you don't turn on your sirtuins, you're losing at least 10% of your mitochondrial function, if not more. Mm-hmm. Um, and your sirtuins, your sirtuin three especially is the only one that's truly associated or known to be associated with uh, increasing longevity if you activate it. So that's important. We also know it starts to decline in your thirties and it's abysmally low by the time you are 60, which means that all of your tissues that require a lot of energy are failing. So your liver, your brain, your heart, and your muscle are especially problematic, right? So if you activate your sirtuins, this is the master regulator. This is the first step. Right. Mm. So there's probably about seven or eight known uh, natural sirtuin three activators, but a lot of them have only been studied in cell systems. And the only big three that we've known that are in mammal systems are hinochial, uh, which come from magnolia. Um, my second favorite is something called dihydromoricetin. Um, and this one's actually incredibly interesting because someone noticed that it improved liver health. Right. And someone else noticed that if you're hung over and you take this stuff, you do better. So it's actually marketed for hangover mornings. And the reason that works is because if you're an alcoholic or if you drink a lot, you're killing your mitochondria in your liver. And by turning on the mitochondria in your liver, you're going to recover faster. So I felt kind of dumb ordering stuff for liver failure for my alcoholic problem, which I don't have, but I take it now daily because I think it's incredibly useful. Um, but the third one that's really shocking that really helps with uh, sir two and three is melatonin, um, which actually is really interesting because it's been, it's, it's evolved with your mitochondria for like, you know, hundreds of thousands of years. And it's been demonstrated that it too activates sir two and three in quite a very substantial way. So those are my top three, right? Um, one or all of them, you know, take your pick. One's probably fine. Um, the other problem with sirtuins, of course, is we know that they require NAD as a cofactor. It's a coenzyme, right? So if you are not on NAD, your, your, uh, sirtuin activation just isn't going to work. So item two in saving your mitochondria has to be some sort of NAD precursor. That's number two, right? Mm -hmm. And then the question is what comes next in saving your mitochondria? And this is a toss up. Um, You want to activate your NRF2 system, which turns on all of your antioxidants. You want to block the opening of your mitochondrial transition pore. Uh, There's just many, many, many things that you could possibly substitute in for number three. Um, But because it's my absolute favorite nutrient, I'm going to throw in astaxanthin because it is the best free radical scavenger that there is. Uh, And it also uh, increases your endogenous antioxidants, your catalase, et cetera. So I would have to go with uh, those three as my top choices. Excellent. So uh, urolithin A is is not in either of your books. I saw that. And uh, what? Well, no, it, well, it is, it but you have to you have to know where to look. Ah. All the urolithins come from allegic acid. Ah, right. Okay. So yeah, that's true. Yeah. Allegic acid is in there, and it's the I call it the most elegant molecule. It looks like mm. the perfect snowflake molecule. Um, and then as, as you break the pieces up, they become the urolithins. It is absolutely right. in there. Ah, and okay. different urolithins do different things and they have different absorption rates. Everyone likes A, but the other ones do stuff too. So it, it is in there. It absolutely right. is in there. Okay. So that one. Now, one other thing on mitochondria, like sometimes there seems to be some supplements that, that actually make mitochondria less efficient, like using un- uncoupling proteins mm-hmm. so that you burn more fuel and get thinner um w- would that be kind of counterproductive for mitochondrial health so the answer has to do with defining your goal 
Hmm. Right. If you are an athlete and you want as much mitochondrial energy as possible, uh, you have goal A, right? Hmm. If you're overweight and you just want to lose weight, it's it's completely the opposite. That's absolutely right. A lot of these things uh, activate the uncoupling protein one, and it turns white fat into brown fat. It's called beijing of fat. Uh, and you create heat um, by just doing nothing else. And it's a fantastic way to lose weight, but you're absolutely right. It's counterproductive to having more mitochondrial energy. But it's it's, it's all about to find your goals. Stress is an underlying cause of many health issues. And while most people focus on finding relief from stress through meditation or other forms of mental exercise, the stress may be caused by lack of a key nutrient. Magnesium is one of the most important nutrients for our health because it plays many crucial roles, supporting muscle and nerve function. It also impacts the release of stress hormones like cortisol and blocks the activity of stimulating neurotransmitters, leading to a more peaceful and restful state. To ensure that we have sufficient magnesium, my wife and I are taking magnesium breakthrough from bio-optimizers. Magnesium breakthrough has the full spectrum of seven types of magnesium, specifically formulated to reach every tissue in our body for maximum health benefits. One of the important reasons we chose magnesium breakthrough is it's made with all natural ingredients, soy free, gluten free, lactose free, non GMO, free of chemicals and fillers. To get 10% discount on Magnesium Breakthrough, simply go to magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern. Use the code modern10. Thank you for your support. Thinking about sarcopenia and muscle loss as mm -hmm. it's something I, I think about quite a lot. So what would you think about um, for supplements for yeah, sarcopenia? So sarcopenia is a really interesting thing. So I'm a rock climber and mm -hmm. I want my muscles and I don't want to lose my muscles. And there's a war raging, of course, about the mTOR pathway, right? Mm -hmm. The mTOR pathway is responsible for building or not building things. And everyone wants to be on rapamycin because obviously deactivating mTOR is supposed to help with longevity. And it does. But one of the risks, because you're blocking cell turnover, is in fact sarcopenia. So again, define your goals. My, my particular goal is to avoid frailty and sarcopenia. Therefore, I activate my muscles. Uh, top three in this category have to be number one, leucine. Uh, leucine is one of the three branch chain amino acids. Um, and the way I sort of describe leucine is if you have all of your amino acids sitting around at a construction site, they're kind of lazy. They're not going to do anything. Leucine is like the general manager. You know, it comes over and says, all right, team, let's go. Let's build the muscle. So without leucine, you can take as many amino acids as you want. Not a whole lot happens. If you take leucine and generally you take them as part of the branch chains, um, then you actually build muscle. So if you want to be a giant human, like giant bodybuilder, you can take them all. If you just want to be lean and muscular, you just need uh, leucine. Um, and it, it also serves as a messenger between cells and it does a variety of other things. But in terms of absolute like building muscle, leucine has to be number one. Uh, number two is um, alpha ketoglutarate. And it does amazing things. Uh, weightlifters have been taking this for a while because they know it helps with muscle. It increases, it's in your Krebs cycle. So if you are short and you do become short over the course of time, um, it also helps your mitochondria, which is nice. And it also breaks into glutamate and glutamine. So it helps your immune system. It helps your intestine, but it also provides the amino acids to build muscle. So that's really quite helpful. Uh, and then the last one is, is your solic acid. Um, I love really, I like this one because if you look at the molecule, it actually looks like the Olympic rings. So I think that's kind of cool, but it also causes you to build muscle and um, be less sarcopenic. So those, those are my big three for not losing muscle. So leucine also seems to uh, work along with NAD precursors to kind of uh, increase the impact of the, of I guess the precursor. Did you? No, it absolutely does. Yeah. Leucine is really interesting. It changes the allosteric mechanism of a lot of molecules. It's it's kind of cool. So mm -hmm. if you add it to a variety of CERT1 activators, it lowers the requirement for NAD. It's, it's kind of a really cool amino acid. But some people are anti-leucine because it activates your mTOR pathway. And then that's sort of counterintuitive to all of these people who want to block your mTOR pathway to prevent, you know, certain aspects of aging. So uh, it's, it's a little controversial, but it's one of my favorite things. And I, I take it daily. 
Uh, interesting. So I was going to ask, what is your kind of main protein source? Do you, do you take exogenous protein powder, like whey, pro, whey protein? Um, I don't. I, I have to tell you, I am a notorious junk food junkie. Mm-hmm. I really... I, I do not suggest anyone model their life after my diet system. I, you know, I eat a little bit of everything. Um, I do not take protein powder. I do take, I take my branch chains, obviously. And I also, I have this goofy thing. If you look at um, glucose management, uh, glycation is very particular to very specific amino acids. For example, it loves to stick to arginine just that there's three of them, but arginine is huge. So I take exogenous arginine on the theory that glucose is going to stick to the arginine that's circulating uh, within my bloodstream rather than the arginine that's stuck into my tissues. So Mm. I take that. And there's a few other ones that sort of do the same thing, but I take amino acids specifically for other reasons, not for protein sources. Right. Okay. Do you ever monitor your kind of blood sugar? like a continuous blood sugar monitor or anything like that? No, I have not. Um, I have a family history of diabetes, but every time I check it, it's absolutely normal. Um, But I also take a lot of crazy medications to lower my blood glucose. Um, I I take something called pioglitazone um, and it, it, it reduces your blood sugar. The reason I take it, however, it's actually one of the strongest PGC1 alpha activators, which helps your mitochondria. Um, and it also, it's really interesting in that it redistributes your fat. So it actually takes it out of your, um, your, you know, around your abdominal cavity and sticks it in your sub tissue. So some people complain that it causes them to gain weight, but it's not really a gain. It's a redistribution. And if something's going to kill you, it's abdominal fat. And in fact, as we get older, we gain abdominal fat and we lose subcutaneous fat. So pioglitazone actually reverses that cascade. Right. So I think it's a fantastic drug. So I take that and it happens to lower my blood sugar a little bit. So that's a win. Right. Um, I take a bit of metformin every day. I don't take a ton, but I take 500 a day. I take 500 of berberine a day and they work, you know, sort of synergistically to lower blood sugar. Um, I take something called dipagliflozin. The flozin family. So the way a kidney works See, this is where I get to be a doctor too. Uh, a kidney, the, the, the glomeruli, they filter your blood and they remove pretty much 90% of glucose as well as a variety of other things. And then you have receptors that pump the glucose back into your vasculature, right? So you remove it and then put it back. This doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense, but that's the way your body works. And so these actually block the receptor that puts it back. The reuptake receptor blockers, essentially, right? So when, you, so when you take the flozen family, you're actually urinating a ton of glucose because you're just not reabsorbing it. Right. So you so you can cheat the system, which is really kind of fun to do. Yes. Right. Yeah. Anyway, good, good. so there, there are there are many ways that you can sort of cheat the system, and I'm the queen of cheating the system. Right. Because I saw that. Uh... Like the ITP tests used an SGL2 inhibitor that, uh, yeah. and and that was one of the few things that was actually achieved uh, life extension in their testing, mm-hmm. and so yeah. it that, I, I saw that it was really cool that there was that one that that's not a drug that you can take that that has a similar effect. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's there are very few actually natural agents that do it as well as the actual drug, and and interestingly enough, the the side effects are very 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 low. Um, uh, the, the real side effects are basically by urinating out more glucose, they're worried about, you know, infections around your perineal area, but as long as you're a cleanly human, the risk is extraordinarily low and you really cannot become hypoglycemic by doing it, Hmm. right? Because you're only going to filter out a certain percentage. Um, you're always going to have some glucose left in your system. So I think it's a fantastic deal. And you're right. There are natural ones. Uh, they're just not as, as good yet. Yeah. At least, at, least, at least we haven't found any that are as, as good. Mm-hmm.